Good afternoon guys. Today we're going to forge a knife from an old file. So stay tuned and we'll get started. Alright guys, so this is an old file that we got at a junk store, I think for a quarter. And there might be three videos to this because there's a few different things that we're going to do. First, we're going to forge our knife here at the forge. Second, we're going to profile it and heat treat it and do the final sharpening. Third, I want to make it full tang, so we're going to use either bone or wood for that, and I've never done that before, so you'll see um, how it goes while we go through that process. Once that knife would be all finished then, I'm going to make a leather sheath for it. So I don't know if it's going to be two or three videos yet, but it's a, it's a pretty intensive process to do this. The forge part is probably the easiest, I think, um, as far as just getting the profile of the knife blade you want. And then the material reduction and everything else, that's where a lot of time comes in and a lot of labor. So we're going to get started and see how we do. Okay guys, so with this file, there's a slight taper, if I hold it this way, about two-thirds down. So we're going to make this the point in our blade. And like I said, I want to make this full tang, so we're just going to break off this end piece. like that. So I'm going to start heating this up, start working this to a point, and drawing it out a little bit. I'm going to get the camera zoomed in a little bit, just keep working through this, and talk while we're going.
All right, guys, so as you can see, I'm starting to already get there where I want my shape. I'm just gonna try to even out this front edge a little bit more and then make sure it's straight. We have a little bit of a curve to it. And then I'm not gonna go too much further with that. I'm gonna just work this a little bit to get some of them file grooves out of each side. So I'm gonna heat it up a few more times to do that. But I'm pretty much gonna be content with it once I get it there. And I'm gonna do a lot of material reduction on this knife. So I'm gonna get that done and then I'll show you once we have our template completed. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna, I placed the knife that we just forged into the forge and I turned it off. So I'm just letting it heat up. And the reason I wanna do that is I actually wanna anneal the blade, which is gonna make it softer so it's more workable when I start to file and grind it. So how I do that is I basically, like I said, I turned off the forge. I'm just putting the knife into the heat. I'm gonna let that get uh, orange color and I'm gonna pull it out and let it air cool and that'll keep it good and soft. If I would throw that in water, it's gonna make it really hard, which we're gonna uh, do that a little bit later. We're gonna harden part of our knife. So for now I'm doing that, I have the knife in. When it gets a orange color, a little bit bright orange color, then I'm gonna pull it out, I'll let it air cool. Once it's cooled down, we'll start the process of filing the material, material removal and start to contour the blade and stuff like that. So we'll get back to you as soon as this knife gets cooled down. Okay, so now that my knife cooled down, I'm going to begin the process of material reduction, reshaping, and then the final, uh, well not the final sharpening, I'm sorry. And then we will heat treat it and then we'll finish our final sharpening. So how I'm gonna do this from this point forward is initially, just to make sure it's nice and even on both sides, I'm gonna just work my file just like this across the face of it, just to get some of those fi those old fire file marks out. I'll do that on both sides. Once that's done, I'll profile the back, and I'm gonna profile this front piece. And as you can see, I mean, it's still pretty thick, so I'm gonna have a lot of work to do. So once I'm done smoothing out both sides, I work the back spine profile and the blade profile and I get that to where I want it, then I'm actually gonna start working at an angle and I'll get some video footage of that. I'm gonna start working downward on each side to keep it nice and even to bring it into a point. So I'm gonna get started with that, show you some clips and then we will get to the heat treat. I'll just continue along this process until we get both sides good and cleaned up and all this scaling off. All right, guys, so I'm continuing to reduce some material off this uh, knife. As you can see, it's coming out pretty good so far. I did a little bit of profiling with it as I was going along. I hit the back spine a little bit. This side I was just lightly working on, but I'm going to keep working on this side until you can see I'm getting a nice smooth clean finish on here so I'm gonna keep working that to get all these spots out I'm not gonna to worry too much about this down in here for the simple fact I'm gonna just scrub that down with a wire brush because that's where my epoxy's my handle I'm sorry will get placed so I'm sort of looking I'm gonna take a little bit more off down there but this stuff down there I'm not gonna waste my time on it's okay if my handles big and thick in there so that's where I'm at right now with the knife I'm gonna finish this all up Finish profiling it out, and then I'll get back to you and I'll show you how I'm gonna, you know, start putting a grind on this knife. So I finished up profiling my blade, as you can see, and I also filed out all the file marks in the middle. Now, like I said, this is a little bit messy down in here still, but if I put my hand on, you can see I'm pretty close. So I might just work some of them out yet, but um, my handle's gonna cover most of that. So I'm not too worried about that. So now it's time to start actually adding my grind, as most people call it, for what type of profile they want on their blade. If they want a Scandinavian flat grind, hollow grind, anything like that. So basically to start this, I'm gonna look at more just a flat grind 
for this. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to work back and forth on each side of the blade. I want to start basically, now I'm sure there's a ton of ways to do this, but this is how I do it. And by no means am I a knife um, maker, but um, it gets the job done and the blades I have made, they turned out pretty well. So what I'll do is I'm going to start at the bottom and I just want to get a good angle and I just want to start working it up. Just like that, okay? Now sometimes what I'll do, because it's they're so early in the process yet, I'll work my way back down. Just trying to hold my knife and my file at a consistent angle. So if I go up once and down once, and then up again and down again, I'm gonna do that exact same thing on the other side. So I don't know if you could see that, but you can already see a bevel starting to form here. So I'm gonna keep working both sides of this. You don't wanna just keep working one side because it's gonna be lopsided. You wanna check down the center of your blade to make sure you're working in even. If it seems lopsided on one side, of course, work that. And then just keep working your bevel. And when you start to get real close, you're actually gonna, you should start to feel some sharpness there. I have a long way to go in this process. So I'm going to keep working at this. I'll get back to you guys shortly once we start to get a better grind and some edge on here. And then we'll show you what's next. Okay, so I finished the material reduction and the project like this, I actually I took it home and I worked on it over some time. So I'll show you it up close. And I'm pretty close to the grind that I want with this knife. And now what we need to do is, because this metal's soft of how we treated it before, so what we need to do now is we need to harden this and then we need to temper it. So to harden it, I'm actually going to fire the forge back up, which we have heated up behind me. We're gonna get this that it's non-magnetic, and normally that's around 1950 degrees, and then we're gonna quench in oil. I'm just gonna use vegetable oil because that's what I have on hand now. We'll quench it in oil, we'll let it cool down until it's the same temperature as the outside temperature that I can still handle it. After that, what we're gonna do is I have a small toaster oven here at the forge. We're gonna bake it, and that is going to temper the metal. So that's gonna take the brittleness out of it because when we quench it, it's gonna make it real hard and then we need to take some of that hardness out, otherwise our blade's gonna crack. So I'm gonna get started with that. We'll get some footage of getting it into the oil, and then we'll get a little bit of footage of it baking, and we'll put our final sharpening on it. And then for now, I think what I'm gonna do is just put a rope handle on this, but I am gonna do some episodes coming up that I'm gonna put an antler handle on, and then we're gonna have to make a sheath for this so we can carry it around safely. Okay, so like I said, we're gonna just place this into the forge. We really wanna focus on this. The handle, of course, uh, we're gonna let that hang out because we really wanna make sure that the blade gets hardened, if anything else. So I'm gonna put it in this way, just because this edge is gonna heat up because it's thinner than the spine. So we're gonna put it in that way, and I'm gonna turn this heat down a little bit, and we're gonna get that started. So the knife's done cooling in our oil quench, and now what we're going to do is we're going to temper the blade because quenching it is going to make it extremely hard, but it's going to make it brittle also. So I did test the back, we're throwing some sparks and stuff with a piece of flint. So this toaster oven's heated up to 400 deg degrees. We're going to put it in there hour, hour and a half, and let it bake. And then once we pull it out, our tempering should be done and we'll work on our final final polishing and sharpening. So I'm going to get that started and we'll get back to you as soon as that's done. Okay, so we have had our knife blade in the toaster oven at a little over 400 degrees because it only goes up to 400 so I turn it a little bit past for around an hour and 45 minutes. And I'm going to pull it out and I want to try to get a good close up. 
what you're looking for in, the, in your blade when you're tempering it is a, like a straw yellow color. And we're starting to get that at the tip of the blade where it's the smallest. And you can hopefully see when I pull this out on the camera that you're gonna get some different shades of like blue down in where it's starting to heat up more. So I'm gonna pull this out and show you. And we're gonna put this back in then after this segment. And we wanna get our whole blade that straw yellow color. And then once that comes out, we're gonna let it cool. And I will pick this video up in a sharpening process, just our final sharpening and polishing of the blade to finish it off. So let me get this out of here. Okay, so hopefully you guys can see that. In here it looks like a little yellow, a little bit of yellow towards the end. And I'll turn it this way too, you can see it a lot more on this side. And you can see some some blues and maybe some purples in that. So this straw yellow, that's what we want our whole blade all the way down colored as. So I'm gonna keep that in for a while longer as it works itself down and then like I said, we'll get to the final sharpening. So what we're gonna do now is I'm gonna start with just a, a finer file. I'm gonna start to work my edge a little bit more because I left this on the thicker side just because of the processes we're gonna be going through with heating it up and tempering it. So I'm gonna work this down with a file and make sure it's good and straight in the center. And then once that's done, I'm gonna start going to some stones. So I'm gonna show you a little bit of footage here of me using the file to start to get my grind on here and then we'll go to a stone and then we'll finish up with the Japanese water stones and we should be quite well after that so all that I'm looking for right here is just to work this edge to a little bit finer of a point and then once I get it on with the stones of course it's going to really make that edge sharp. So I don't have to kill it too much with this. So as you can see, it's cleaning up pretty quickly. And what I'm going to do in this section here is I'm just going to run this file lightly over this just to give it a a rougher look, a hand forged look. So I'm going to work it out like that and I think that'll look pretty nice once I'm done. So I'm going to do that on both sides and we'll get back to you once we get on onto the different stones. Okay, so what I've done, I put just some bank line as my handle on this file knife. And I'm still going to, just because I'm out in the woods, I'm still going to go home and put this on my Japanese water stones and use my diamond file, but I didn't have that stuff with me for right now, so we just used what we had around the forge. But I did get quite a sharp blade on this, and I'm gonna show you a couple good things about this knife. Number one, as far as for feather sticks, just doing a quick sharpening and really not getting too intense with it. It's cutting quite well. For the ferrocerium rod, it's throwing a shower of sparks. And then I'm gonna get up close for this one, guys. My flint, I'm still getting, get a good angle here. Sparks off my spine. So overall, I'm pretty happy with how this came out. I'm gonna do more videos to come with this, like I said, a night sheath, and I do wanna put a different type of, type of handle on here. But for now, this will work for what I need it for. 
So remember, if you're gonna do a knife like this, you don't need to be a bladesmith to do this. This is something in a self-reliance type situation that you might need to create. Or if you're in that situation, you wanna create before something would happen to your knife so you have a backup. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Stay tuned for more. Thanks, guys.